This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we touch base with the Downtown Hazelton Alliance for Progress about the possible future of this downtown building. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Cara. And we start with headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Guilty. That was the plea entered today by a Hazel Township woman charged with fatally shooting her live-in boyfriend. 30-year-old Jessica Olinsky pleaded guilty this morning to third-degree murder in connection with the killing of 34-year-old Matthew Gailey at their township home in 2011. Olinsky faces a maximum of 40 years in prison. Sentencing is set for May 16th. More than a dozen fire companies responded to an early morning fire in Butler Township. The blaze broke out just after 3 a.m., destroying the unoccupied home on East County Road. The home was being remodeled. Tankers had to haul water from a pond off of Route 93. A residence above a garage adjacent to the burning home sustained some minor damage. A fire marshal was expected to be on scene today to determine the cause. It's official. The borough of Gilberton has officially abolished its police department. Gilberton has been without a police force since July 31st. That's when then-police chief Mark Kessler was sus suspended for allegedly using borough automatic weapons on his own time to make YouTube videos. After the suspension, the borough received police protection from the Pennsylvania State Police. Then in February, a settlement was reached stating that Kessler was separated from his employment and voluntarily retired. One week later, the borough advertised an ordinance to abolish its police department, and by a vote of 6 to 0, Gilberton Council did just that. Now let's get to that interview with a member of the Downtown Hazelton Alliance for Progress. One of the big stories of the day happening in Downtown Hazelton, the old security savings bank, there's a possibility maybe the Hazelton Art League can be heading there from their other home right now in Downtown Hazelton, maybe outgrowing that. And here today, Krista, Krista Snyder from the Downtown Hazelton Alliance for Progress. Krista, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And let's start there. You are helping out the Hazelton Art League, maybe with a grant. Can you just tell us about that, why you decided to get involved and where the grant stands right now? Sure. Well, uh, we found out uh, months ago that the mayor had um, shown interest in uh, leasing the Security Savings Bank building to the Art League. And we just felt that that was uh, a wonderful idea because uh, we see arts as being central, arts and culture, you know, to be central to whatever downtown revitalization uh, process gets, gets underway. Uh, arts and culture are really central to that. And so we're, we're trying to facilitate uh, that as much as possible. We're partnering with the Art League um, in, in several respects. Uh, one of the grants that we're uh, applying for is a National Endowment for the Arts uh, grant that would fund uh, the adaptive reuse uh, design of that building as a city arts center. Um, one of the biggest hurdles, I think, um, at least for the Art League right, right now, is to understand, well, how could that building be used, you know, for that purpose? Because it has been modified quite a bit over the years, uh, you know, and they have, uh, you know, concerns over cost of, of renovation and also uh, costs of, uh, you know, just maintenance and upkeep. And so, uh, you know, with this grant, uh, we're hoping to, um, you know, fund the, uh, the architectural and design studies and programming studies uh, that would be associated with, with, re with converting that building for, for that use. So the whole building then would be the Hazelton Art League, if, if this goes through, or would there be other spaces there or that would, would be the well, Hazelton Art League? one of the things that we're, uh, again, trying to, to understand is, you know, from an economic perspective, um, you know, does it make sense? Uh, is, is it, is it uh, big enough uh, for other uses? And, you know, if it is to be a mixed-use facility, you know, what other types of uses uh, could bring income? into that uh, facility, you know, to help defer rent or maintenance costs, um, you know, and so that, you know, it has, to, and that would be part of the study as well, in partnership with the city and in partnership with the, uh, with the Art League and, and, you know, possibly others. I thought it was interesting we talked about the balance. Um, when you talk about progress in downtown Hazleton, you need industry, you need business, but you mentioned arts, culture, that's a very important part of it. And do you get, do people ask about that? I mean, do people, do you think people don't realize what's offered at the Art League? There can be more of that maybe? Yeah, I think, 
I was blown away actually by um, when I first started working with the Art League to understand, you know, to, to help write this this grant, uh, what it is that they actually do offer. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of documentation that went into the uh, the grant application that I, I really didn't even know myself. All that all that they offer, all the classes, all the events, the music, the you know, as we had talked about the the beer tasting or wine tasting. Um, so they do offer uh, a tremendous amount to the community and that we found really with all the other um, uh, downtown revitalization uh, success stories um, throughout the country, you know, arts and culture have always played a key role in, in downtown rebirth. Krista talked more about the progress of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress and you can see that story on Facebook.com slash FYI News 13. The Hazleton Police Department has a new vehicle. Lisa Sugard has more. Thank you very much, Kenny. I'm pleased to introduce Hazleton's Police Chief, Frank DeAndrea, who is joining us today. A new announcement for the Police Department Chief, a new addition to your arsenal, your fleet in the city of Hazleton. Yeah, the uh, Police Department is very, very excited today to unveil the new K-9 vehicle. The new K-9 vehicle is a Dodge Durango. It's been outfitted by Kovac KME for us. And the exciting thing about this is, first of all, it fits the color scheme of the new Hazelton Police Department. It's a blue vehicle with the gold lettering and striping. They look so professional. And I always say, it's important for the police department when they show up on a scene to look professional. We're such a professional organization with the work we do, we deserve to look professional. But more so than that, the city deserves a police department that they could be proud of. And so we work so hard on our image every day and upholding that image. This canine vehicle is outfitted with a remote door access for the dog. What that means is that this vehicle will be operated by Corporal Kirk Wetzel, our canine handler of Grizz. And when Corporal Wetzel is out of the vehicle, if there would be a problem, he could remotely pop the door and Grizz could immediately enter the incident or take part and assist. That's so critical in today's world where you don't know what you're getting into when you step out of the vehicle. Once you're involved in a fight or an altercation, it's too late to run back and get the dog. And so this is the next step up for the canine unit. Very shortly, we're pleased to announce that we'll be adding our second dog, Echo, who is in training right now with Patrolman George Schaefer. And Echo and Grizz collectively will be seen all summer through our business districts, the downtown district, um, Wyoming Street, Alter Street. Uh, and again, with the revitalization of the downtown and the business districts, it's my feeling that the public deserves an extra element of safety. So as often as we can, we're gonna have the canine units out on foot patrol. These canine dogs that we have are top notch. They're incredible animals. They're not only drug detection dogs. Um, these are patrol dogs. They do bite work. They're bite certified. The city has bite insurance because they're a member of the patrol fleet and the dogs are trained to fight, no different than a police officer is trained to fight. They're gonna be incredible for the city and for the police department. Just one more tool in our arsenal, but today I'm so proud to display and unveil the canine vehicle, and I hope that the city is as proud as the police department is to show it off. Well, Chief, I believe that everyone is always proud of the Hazleton Police Department. They do an outstanding job, and they have a tough job to do. And I'm sure this comes at a great time now with this happening. The warm weather's here, so it allows you to get out there and be that, make that presence more known. And we all know a lot more people on the streets during the summer, so it makes your job a little tougher. I am so proud myself of every member of the police department that uh, you know I work with in Hazleton, the canine unit, every unit. And uh, we're excited to be able to put this unit into play. Well, we look forward to seeing it, and thank you for coming here today and telling us all about it. Hazleton Police Chief Frank DeAndrea talking about the latest addition to the department, and I hope you'll be back often to keep us up to date on what's happening in the city. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Reporting for FYI, I'm Lisa Sugart. 
Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Chief. And thanks, Grizz. Tonight, we have news from the superintendent's desk. The Hazleton Area School District Board of Education will hold a town hall meeting next Tuesday, April 8th. The meeting will take place at 6 p.m. at the Freeland Elementary Middle School Cafeteria. The purpose of the meeting is to allow for public input on district matters. Remember to pick up Thursday's edition of the Standard Speaker. For breaking news, sign up for text and email alerts at standardspeaker.com. Still ahead, I chat with Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman about people from our area making it big in the sports world. And next, we get another inexpensive design tip. What's the sense is coming up next on FYI. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. What's the sense? We're going to learn about it today on our special segment here on FYI. We are back here at the Sage Exchange with Tamara, and we are working with REITs today. REITs, hey. and thanks for coming back. Thanks. So what are we doing today? Uh, well, spring has sprung. It might not feel like it out there, but um, I need a little help with my friends here, and we can get some spring popping up all over the place. All right. Let's cool. bring it on. Let's bring it on. Um, first, I want to start with, it's called a bird seed wreath. Okay. And I made this out of bird seed, sugar, and just caro. You just cure it, boil it out. The birds love this. I love and to take it's pretty. It, I love to take these to the cemetery mm. and put them on the cemetery. And they can hang in a tree. You can make a big one, a little one. Do whatever you want. But they're very cheap to make. And they're so fun. And it's nice to just hang them pretty out on the trees. Just I do them for Christmas, too. OK. And all the directions are on your website yeah, on how to do this. Right. And then I love this. People are always looking to do something unique and different for their front doors springtime. Now, this is just a bunch of dead stuff that, that's laying around. Okay. If you're using dead, dead flowers, what you want to do is you want to make sure you spray like a shellac or a polyurethane on them because then they don't fall. This is fallen. I just wanted to show like this was just twigs just flowers that my daughter got that I just dried out and some hydrangeas. All right, you could spray them as well if you want right. to put some color or some sparkle on it, right? Yeah. All right. Now, um, so this is the bird seed for that. Moss and cardboard, I'm going to have a project on the website showing you what I could do with just this moss and cardboard. Okay. And sticks, just get some spray paint. Neat. Color your sticks, you know, and I'm going to make a wreath with this too. I'll show you that. Just. Cheap stuff I get at the Dollar Tree is awesome for stuff like this. Ribbon, flowers, I mean, it's pennies, and you could just bring the spring on. And it's good because you can incorporate your families, your children, anyone uh, want to do this for your business or for your home. Join us next week because we're going to talk about basket decorating. Yes. Time now for FYI News 13 Weather. This is what it looked like on Broad Street in Hazleton this afternoon. You can see some work being done as the rain stayed away this afternoon. Here's News 13 weather from the National Weather Service. Tonight, increasing clouds with a low around 34. Thursday, there is a chance of rain, a 50% chance, and that will be mainly after 11 a.m. The high will be near 53. Thursday night, 70% chance of rain, cloudy with a low around 37. For Friday, rain is likely 60% chance. The high will be near 47. Friday night, 70% chance of rain, cloudy, low around 40. For Saturday, it's a nice day, partly sunny with a high near 50. Saturday night, Partly cloudy, cold around 30. For your Sunday, again, mostly sunny. The high getting up near 50. And Sunday night, again, dropping down into the 30s. I like the Valley. I like crafts. Let's learn more about the Valley Craft Fair from Lisa Sugar. My guest today on FYI is Carrie Cupshow, and she is the president of the PTA at the Valley Elementary Middle School. And Carrie, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Big event coming up this Saturday, an event that so many people in our viewing area look forward to each and every year, and that is the Big Valley Craft Fair. So tell us about it. Well, we are excited this year. We have some new added events that we're having. Um, we are going to have a bounce house for the kids this year, which is exciting for them. Um, we have some games and crafts, of course. <laughs> there um, will be various vendors. We have 
35 um, signed on right now. And we um, are continuing to take ra uh, crafters and vendors for the rest of the week. We have our tricky trays, which are our big pull in. <laughs> Everybody looks forward to them. Um, how we do it is each uh, classroom collects money and makes a special craft um, craft fair tricky tray. And we have a Lego one and um, an Easter basket. We have a Kindle we're giving away and a fire pit, just to name a few. <laughs> Wow, some really big prizes. I know I've been a fan of that for many, many years, and uh, there always are wonderful prizes. Now, you put a lot of hard work, a lot of volunteerism into this. What is the money raised used for to help the kids at Valley L? Well, um, it goes into our general fund. Right now, um, our general fund will cover anything from field trips. Um, we also do various programs throughout the year, educational programs that come in and um, teach the kids about things like Ben Franklin, um, Birds of Prey, um, and things like that. And then right now we are actually um, starting to earmark some of our funds to do a new um, playground for the children. Our playground is not in the best condition and it's been there since Valley opened. So we really are um, trying to get the money raised for that. All right, so some very good causes. And the all-important information, the times that it's going to be taking place in the day. Um, that is uh, this Saturday, April 5th, from 10 to 3. And I really do hope everybody can make it out. It's really exciting. We're excited to. And if anybody out there still wants to be a last-minute vendor, can they call somewhere to get yes, signed up? Yes, you can call the school, and they will get um, me uh, get you in contact with me. Or um, Cindy Zainel also is um, running it, so she can also do it. All right, so great tricky trays, great crafts, games, fun, you name it, plus food too, correct? Right, oh, lots of food, yes. Food, so take your appetite when you go and head on out to the Valley Elementary Middle School this Saturday from 10 till 3. It's going to be a great time, and you might win some great prizes as well, all for a good cause. It's worth it for me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank they you. hope to see you there on Saturday. For a complete list of our community events, go to our Facebook page or ssptv.com. If I ever win the lottery, I'll make the biggest tricky tray Hazleton has ever seen. Write that down. Here's your lottery, midday winning lottery numbers from today. Daily, 188, Big 4, 5957, Quinto, 13754, Treasure Hunt, 4, 22, 24, 26, 30. FYI, we'll be right back. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Dave Seaman, sports editor for the Standard Speaker, joins us once again here on FYI. Dave, let's go right into it. Spring sports preview coming soon to the Standard Speaker. And there's a lot more than just preview capsules, even though they're very um, interesting as well, coming into the spring sports preview. If you could just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, this is our third annual spring sports preview. Uh, a lot of times in, year, in years past, we ran previews of all the teams, but they weren't in one particular paper there'd be hit and miss one day you'd have a preview of the soccer team and another of the volleyball team track and field team baseball team this puts it all in one package for the readers and our subscribers to have it as a keepsake too where we put the preview capsules in and we put a lot of pictures in get a lot of names and faces in the paper and uh, it's, it's proven to be very successful this year because we have an, a, a late publication later publication date since most of the teams should have had their season started by now uh, we decided to make it more of a magazine format where we have features, a lot more features, uh, in-depth features, question and answer session with a, with a local coach. Uh, and uh, it's going to be, a, be a nice, another nice keepsake for, for our readers. If you can, if not, that's fine. Is there something that really excited you about it that you can't get to get it go out there without giving away maybe too much, but is there something in there that really piqued your interest? I just think uh, just getting to know these people, uh, know the coaches behind the scenes. Uh, uh, Marion's baseball coach, for example, he's retiring after this year, after 30 years of, uh, as a coach, Jeff Neitz, and he's done a fabulous job at Marion. Uh, we got an in-depth look at him. Sam Matta did a, a question and answer session with him. We'll, we'll do something like that. We have a, a feature story on uh, the girls' softball team coming up, and we'll talk about their uh, academic success, not only their success on the field, but they've been very, very, they've been rewarded for it too. So that's a special award that they got. Uh, there's just different features and different local kids who have excelled on the college level too. So it, it, it's a lot of fun and a lot of rewarding work. 
All right, and there'll also be a special Rail Riders insert. Of course, Russ Kanzer will be featured in that as well, so keep your eye out for that as well. Let's switch to college basketball. Mike Rhodes, local guy, Monoy City, now going to Rice. You said Sam Matta from the paper talked to him a few times. What were your thoughts? His former coach from VCU seemed very supportive, really, really liked Mike Rhodes. What were your thoughts on him going to Rice? I think it was just a matter of time before Mike got a head, head job. He, he's been known as one of the uh, top young coaches in, in, in the whole country, and uh, following Mike's career, I didn't really get to know him when he played, but just followed his career, how dynamic of a player he was at Monoir, where they got to the Eastern Final back in 1991. He went on, had success at uh, Lebanon Valley College, where he was an All-American. They won a national championship under Pat Flannery, who later went on to Bucknell and had success there. And then uh, Mike went perfect transformation into a coach, and he did a great job in a coaching level uh, at the small college level went to VCU, had success there, and uh, again, young guy, dynamic, and the, the players love to play for him, and if he has the same style that he used at VCU, he's going to have a lot of success. Dave, last local thing I want to ask you, uh, on the national level for covering local guys who've made it big, you have your Russ Kanzlers, you have Mike Rhodes, you have Joe Madden at Tampa Bay. Earlier in your career, is, is there more now on that level, or is it kind of, it, it stays steady throughout the years, or... I think we're just in a dynamic period right now where we're getting a lot of, uh, we're in a good situation, a good cycle now. And we had situations before. I just think there's a lot more opportunities for people who are willing to put the time in. Uh, and it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication. But we have the Russ Kanzlers who's worked hard to get where he is. We've had, uh, like you said, Mike Rhodes has worked hard. He's paid his dues. And people from this area pay their dues. They, they, they know what the, the hard work ethic is. And eventually, it's, it's an old saying, but you work hard, you're going to get rewarded for it. And there's so many others. Eric, Eric Sugarman, Sugarman, sorry, who's also you know a trainer um, still for the Minnesota Vikings. He's or? the head athletic trainer for the Minnesota Vikings. He's made his way through the NFL. Uh, and it, it just shows that there's opportunities for people in this area. If they're, they're willing to work hard enough, you can get whatever you want. All right, well, Dave, thank you again for joining us. Keep an eye out for the Standard Speaker Spring Sports Preview. And Dave here on FYI. It's Wednesday, and here's some delicious alliteration. It's Signature Steak Night at Bottlenecks. All of their signature steaks are only $9.95, plus bottomless soup and salad for only $2.95. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Evelyn A. Elias of West Hazleton, Mass is Friday at 10.30 a.m. in the Good Shepherd Church. Friends may call Friday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. The Crofton Hughes Funeral Home is assisting the family. Angelo A. Guerrero of Sugarloaf. Funeral is Friday at 10 a.m. in the St. John Bosco Church. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family. Angeline R. Tite of Hometown. Funeral is Friday at 10 a.m. in the St. Jerome's Church. Friends may call from 8 to 9.30 a.m. from the Lamar Christ Funeral Home. Mary Louise Watcher of Stanford, New Jersey. Memorial Luncheon is Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Top Shelf in Hazleton. Robert Norman Warner of Hazel Township. The Zeiselman Roach Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Rosemarie Craig of Hazel Township. The Fierro Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Doris Barron Fierro of Hazelton. Mass is Thursday at 10.30 a.m. at the St. Cyril Methodius Parish at St. Joseph's Church. Friends may call at the church beginning at 10 a.m. The Fierro Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. Dr. Daniel G. Luongo of Stroudsburg. The Thomas Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Andrew McAloos of Clares. Arrangements will be announced by the Stanley E. Analoski Funeral Home. And Richard P. Novatka, formerly of Shenandoah. The Louis D. Truskowski Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, and Palm Cross is now on sale for April 13th. Call 570-454-0111. Thanks for joining us for FYI. For, thanks for joining us on FYI. And keep your feedback coming on Facebook and Twitter. We appreciate it, and we are looking at all of your comments. You could comment on my delivery right there. This is your town. This is your show. Until tomorrow, take it easy, everyone.